Let's face it, Wallace and Gromit are considered national treasures here in the UK, and everybody seems to know who they are. If you were like me growing up as a kid, then you first heard about them when The Curse of the Were-Rabbit was released in 2005, which was one of the first ever theatrical movies they released. In 2023, there was a trailer for a new Wallace and Gromit game for the MetaQuest. That's right, for the first time ever, Wallace and Gromit would be able to be played through, through the player's eyes and they could experience the world for themselves in virtual reality. The game begins with Wallace rearranging stuff with tools for a new contraption that Wallace has designed called the Auto Caddy, which is some kind of robot that can spit out golf clubs and a bunch of other stuff really. To my knowledge, the entire process begins on December 24th and wraps up around July. Around May you don't even have hands yet, so it kind of shows the whole process for the player. The game is compatible with hand controllers, which are absolutely great and they make the game feel more immersive and real, and I highly recommend them. So the plot works like this, Wallace starts panicking because he's late for his vacation to play golf in Bogner, but then he decides that he could take the rocket there instead and wouldn't be as late. Also the graphics in this game are gorgeous, and they really do capture the films. If anyone ever struggles to find Wallace's slippers, you can find them under the table. Anyway, you just need to fill the suitcase enough times and then you'll be done packing. Before you can take off in the rocket, there's a bunch of things you have to take care of first. Just like the first film, the rocket doesn't start right away. You have to take care of a few nooks and crannies first before you can actually set off. This entire rocket, by the way, only runs on something as simple as milk and jam. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I can't even say this without laughing slightly. Milk and jam to run an entire rocket. That's hilarious. Once you've finished doing everything, the rocket finally sets off, and you can look out the window if you like, but you can't really see anything other than clouds. But it's still a nice touch. So after Wallace accidentally hits the electrical cable while playing golf in the rocket for some reason, everything starts floating and the ship goes off course. The rocket ends up landed on Mars, and a bunch of our parts, basically our engine, and everything else that we need to get out has been scattered all over Mars and we need to go get them. Wallace is more interested in playing mini golf however, but this is necessary to find a bunch of engine parts. In one of the golf stages, or in this case crazy golf, because we're literally playing this in space, has you shoot in a bunch of golf balls in statues mouths. You have to get in between one, two or three golf balls. You need to get enough of these for all the moving pillars to go down so that Wallace's ball can go through. Make sure you avoid the red ones. I didn't know that at first, and I spent ages on this, and this can get very tiring if you keep messing up. The last part of the golf stage is some kind of piano pattern teaching thing, but it's pretty fun to do. Every time you play the pattern correctly on the piano, one of these fat but very cute and adorable cuddly I'm going to call these space caterpillars, comes down. Wallace gets his ball over there, obviously, and then just jumps on their back willy-nilly. This is a great VR game, and everything looks so innocent in this game. Like, so adorable. There's just nothing wrong with it. It's just so cute. Even in the UK, we have such a thing as Wallace and Gromit crisps, so the hype is definitely still alive today. The only thing that annoyed me in this game was some of the puzzles. You knew how to do them, but you never really had enough time, and they could be incredibly frustrating. Like, oh my god, I was absolutely exhausted after doing the last one. But is that still enough to make this a bad game? Absolutely not. This game is a solid 10 out of 10.